Our next speaker is Blaine Schatz. Blaine is our director here at the Carrington Center. And he's also um, continues to be quite involved with research projects. And uh, tonight he's going to talk about one that he's particularly interested in. It's the second year of the study looking at uh, interaction of plant populations and, and uh, relative maturity of, of corn hybrids. Uh, Blaine is originally from North Dakota, and he has a master's degree from NDSC in agronomy. Uh, last year during the row crop tour, uh, we stopped at uh, this particular study um, where we're looking at the influence of plant populations and, and hybrid maturity, and uh, looking at the influence ultimately on corn performance. And this is an example of a, of a, of a simple study, if you will, looking at a traditional production practice that is an inherent part of anyone who's growing a particular crop, in this case, corn. The reason that we're looking at this particular issue, and I guess I would call your attention to the third page, <clears throat> there are some slides there that basically cover the subject matter I'm going to make reference to. We have a situation here where we've had research over the years that has investigated plant populations in corn. What we found ourselves uh, faced with is that corn production obviously has expanded greatly in the state of North Dakota. Whereas corn was predominant in the south, very southeastern part of the state, and it has expanded uh, as we go towards the western, uh, northwestern regions of the state. So we have a situation where corn production has expanded greatly. Corn production has expanded to some areas that uh, corn was not typically grown. The other scenario we have is that um, the NDSU-based research that we have to look at plant populations um, is getting quite dated. Uh, our current, our uh, last uh, studies were with any significant detail with them. When I say that, uh, looking at a, a, a significant series of population contrasts, is uh, is is quite old. It's uh, is, it was last done in, in the later 1990s. And the other thing we're finding is that though our our recommendations might be stagnant, if you will, or, or, or rather old, our research is rather old, we have found that you, the growers, and the industry has been using plant populations that are probably significantly higher than what we at NDSU have largely and historically been, been recommending. So that's why we put in place this particular trial, because again, we need to update that, we need to uh, uh, evaluate these higher plant populations that in many cases are actually higher than the top end populations that were evaluated in the 80s and in the 1990s. As we review the current recommendations of NDSU, we look at our extension bulletin and look at plant populations. Uh, for the higher rainfall areas of eastern North Dakota, which we are represented by, the recommendation is uh, 22,000 to 28,000 plants per acre. That's what you'll see in our literature. With a recommendation, if you're in an irrigated environment, or you might extrapolate that to a real high rainfall area, we're recommending basically 32,000 plants per acre. But again, that recommendation is based off of uh, research that is uh, really quite dated. In more recent years, we found that our neighboring states have looked at that quite extensively. In Minnesota, I know they ran, uh, most of these environments were in central Minnesota and southern Minnesota, where research was run extensively over a three to five year period uh, at multiple locations, and they have revised their recommendations to basically indicate that the uh, optimum plant population is between 34, 32 and 34,000 established plants per acre. Likewise, about the same time, Wisconsin was looking at this issue uh, simultaneous, and uh, they've come up with that their economically optimum plant population is about 34,000 plants per acre. So anyway, that's what the current recommendations are out there with some of our neighboring states. And that's, again, the basis for why we're doing this particular trial. Again, we just wanted to uh, review a wide range of populations to identify what is the optimum. And as we go forward, put some economic analysis to it to determine what's not only optimum for production, but optimum economically. Now I want to just touch on the, uh, the treatments that we have, review those. And we see some examples. Basically, we're looking at seven different plant populations. We've got data, of course, from 2012, and we have populations that range from 20,000 plants per acre up to 44 at 4,000 uh, plant increments. So we have seven plant populations. Of course, we wanted to look at the influence of, of hybrid because there is that uh, belief, that inference, that hybrid maturity, uh, the specific optimum or population may vary with, with different maturities of hybrids. So in the trial, we're looking at 83, 85, and 87 in a 90-day hybrid, looking for a representative hybrid within those particular RM ratings. 
So those are our treatments, and uh, just as an example, as we are situated here, we have, I want to call your attention now to the signage just to give you some perspective. We have uh, this year, um, three different main plots are, are, are labeled. We have, I think it's uh, 34, 26,000, and uh, 42,000 uh, down at that side. And the listing of hybrids there basically are, are the three different, uh, for the four different hybrids in the in the range by which they are are shown are in the plot. So, for example, I'm standing in the 83-day hybrid. Two rows over would be the 90. This would be the 87. The next two rows would be the 85. And there's two rows of garden either side at the same population that these main plots are at. Now, as I look at the plants, I want to quickly uh, make reference that the spotting you see on the leaves. It only goes in the first couple of plants. This was a pea field across the way that was des desiccated, and we had a little bit of drift. So this is not some disease that Michael needs to get working on or anything like that. It's a herbicide drift. But anyway, that's a little bit about the, the treatments. Let's look at some of the results from last year. Uh, some of you have seen this, this, this information, but the next, turn your page over, you'll see the, the, uh, the results we came up with last year. Some great yields in the trial last year, probably averaged around 183, 185 bushels per acre. As you probably, if you were on the trial last or tour last year, you know we were just ahead, you know, probably uh, 200 yards from where we're, we're situated right now. And the, the first chart there shows basically, the bar chart there is the average of all four relative maturities within those populations. You can see that though we had some responses, the response was minimal in that if we take out the low population, we take out the high population, that basically we never had any significant difference between the 24,000 up to the 40,000 last year. Even numerically, as you look at those numbers, there's no more than probably a uh, four to five bushel difference amongst that range. Now that was one year, that was just last year. Looking at the next slide to the right, uh, look at the individual response amongst the, the hybrid maturities. As you look at those colored bars, uh, it's not keyed in there in any legend, but left to right is the 83 in the yellow, 85 in the blue bar, 87 day RM in the, in the uh, orangish, and then the green bar is the 90 day. But basically you see that regardless of those four relative maturity contrasts, the response was generally similar amongst those uh, different maturities as we changed uh, plant population. I think it's significant that we, we look at this because we know populations, you know, plant populations, regardless of what crop we're working with, that's one of our inputs. And maybe the last uh, number of years, um, we've had maybe a little bit more, not significant, but we've had a little bit more latitude to uh, put some resources into our inputs. And we need to put resources into our inputs. But typically, probably with every thousand plants per acre increase, it's, it's a couple dollars. So if you look at our increment change from, let's say, 28 to 32,000, that's probably $8 an acre. So, I mean, at some point in time, it's going to become more significant, possibly, to, to really fine-tune. And that's what we're trying to do here, is to fine-tune this, uh, especially in light that it has been looked at in recent years. Other observations from 2012, the trial, is that uh, we, we be, got a little bit dry last year also, in August. And we did see that our higher plant populations, especially once we got a 36,000 beyond, that we did get a moderate amount of lower canopy firing. Uh, we were getting more interplant competition, and uh, moisture was becoming a factor. And we did start losing some of our lower uh, leaf can or lower leaves in our canopy. But as you look at the results, it didn't have any negative effect. But maybe that is something that prevented us from realizing enhanced yields with that 36 or that 40,000, who knows? As far as other factors, days uh, harvest moisture, test weight, plant height, there were no influences of the populations. The populations did not affect some of those other agronomic factors. Now looking to this year's trial, which we have behind us here, it's patterned after the trial of last year. Once again, we're looking at seven different plant populations, four different maturities, Four other hybrids were selected to represent the 83, 5, and 7, and 90-day hybrids. Uh, you'll see some differences in the, in, the, um, in the plant populations. As I indicated, instead of 28, we're looking at 26. Instead of 36, we're looking at 34. 
As we went out here to thin back at the very uh, initial emergence, we thinned back, we made counts of all the plots, and we found that we were a little bit short of our targets. So what we did is the crew came back out here and reduced each population by 2,000 so that we could get very, very much right on our desired populations. So we are looking at slightly different, basically we're looking at 18,000 to 42,000 plants per acre at the same 4,000 plant increments. We have a very different season this year in the sense that we've had a much more persistent dryness, moisture stress than what we had last year. We had a bit of that last year, but this year we have much more significant stress than what we've had. And so I think it's going to be a great season to evaluate uh, plant populations, uh, not from a scenario of optimum growing conditions, but in a scenario where we do experience stresses. And across the new frontier of corn production in North Dakota, we probably are going to have those seasons as we get to central, west, central North Dakota and we get further west, northwest, we're going to experience that probably. That's our history. So I think from that standpoint, this year's trial will be quite valuable. Because that's what I have for this uh, particular trial. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer. The question is, should we be um, looking at higher, um, higher plant nutrition, higher fertility levels when we're at these higher plant populations because of the possible inherent need for additional um, inputs, resources, and so forth? And certainly, um, that is a factor to consider. I guess in these particular trials, do know that they are uh, managed with relatively high fertility, uh, uh, high yield expectations, and with that rather high fertility, typically we've been looking around 200 pounds of, of uh, available nitrogen in these trials. And so um, maybe in some scenarios uh, that might be deficient, but I know from our work down at the Oaks Irrigation Research Site, under irrigated conditions, rarely has uh, have we seen any need for end levels beyond that, even with uh, 220, 200. 30 bushel corn. The question within this work, have we looked at the issue of flex versus non-flex, some of the different um, characteristics such as that, uh, along other plant architecture issues? Uh, no, we have not. I guess uh, to date we have uh, basically tried to get what we felt was a representative uh, corn hybrid that did well in the previous year's performance test and that we could obtain the necessary seed amounts for. But that's a good point. I guess that's one of the things that I think last year, <clears throat> as I tried to get background information on the hybrids, we did have some uh, variability there. We had at least uh, two that were considered a uh, flex, and at least one that was a fix. Uh, but we've been trying to incorporate that into there when we can get the uh, hybrids we're looking for.